Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The Central Bank of Nigeria on Tuesday raised its uh, benchmark lending rate to 16.5%. Uh, this is in a sustained push to control inflation and ease the pressure on the Naira, which has been through a lot in recent time. CBN Governor um, Godwin Emefiele made this known at the end of the Monetary Policy Committee meeting, the statutory Monetary Policy uh, Committee meeting that held in Abuja. Now, the CBN said the previous increases were beginning to yield results and that there was a need to keep tightening. Uh, it tightened by 100 basis points. And Mayfield announced that the committee also retained the cash reserve ratio at 32.5% and voted to retain the asymmetric corridor at plus 100 and minus 700 basis points around the MPR. Uh, the liquidity ratio was retained at 30 percent a cash reserve ratio is a share of uh, a bank's total you know customer deposits that must be kept with the central bank in the form of liquid cash while the bank's liquidity ratio is the proportion of deposits or deposits rather and uh, other assets that they must maintain to be able to meet short-term obligations now what does uh, this uh, lending rate increase mean for Nigeria's economy. I'm glad to say we have joining us this morning uh, to discuss this two wonderful individuals. Uh, Mukhtar Mohammed is our first guest. Um, he's a financial analyst and a chief executive officer. He joins us live via Zoom in Lagos. Uh, Mukhtar, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good morning. All right, all right. We'll also be joined later by Shegun Shopiton, who is the principal partner, Woodbridge and Scott Consulting Lakers. Well, let's start with you, Mukhtar. Um, did you expect, uh, you know, were you, were, you, were you surprised that uh, there was more tightening by the MPC? Yes, I was. I, I was. I thought with the result they've gotten, uh, we could just maintain um, the rate because you, we've seen that in July, Inflation was a month, month and month was about 1.82. At that October, we've gone the inflation was doing 1.24. I thought that was a very good result. I thought they were going to maintain it. But I think um, they looked at the festivity period that we are going into also to come to this decision because there will be a lot of spending during this festivity period. So if they are not able to raise, this, raise the rate at this time, that means all the gain that they have um, achieved over the months could be eroded and i think that's why they did that and also we mustn't forget the global inflation pressure is all over and it's also a challenge to the financial market globally and we, we also know that the russia and ukraine war is still up, up uh, ongoing there's not been any peace talk there and again we are beginning to hear from china zero COVID policy of china and they've been shut down also in some of the um, chinese factories so all these are going to play out um, going forward so i think that's why the 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 risk the, uh, the the rate you remember every other uh, um, um variables were left on 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 touch but only just um the rate that was high so definitely i think they are looking at the result that they have been able to achieve thus far over the months and um thinking that with it with risk i would come also on that positivity even if you look at um, that by and by the um um, manufacturers or those that have collected loans from the bank it's not so much of a good news for them hmm. interesting indeed um, let's look at the the uh, the complaints by the manufacturers and industrial aids who are saying that uh, there'll be an increase in the amount of bad debts uh, by those in that sector and uh, it's going to cause a shutdown of of, of some of the uh, the industries you have in the country um, how is this so well, I think it's true, but uh, when I go and call a shutdown, I, I don't know about that yet. But I think uh, when you look at um, um, the cost of borrowing, we go up and the manufacturers are suffering a lot of challenges. They still have the power issues are still there. They still have high costs of um, gas also to power their plant are still there. There's also the economic, um, uh, microeconomic instability whereby a lot of Nigeria cannot afford their, their, their goods any longer like before because of the earning power of Nigeria has not increased despite the, 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 the purchasing, the purchasing power of Nigeria has not increased despite the um, price has gone up. So 
I think they are looking at that. Uh, I agree with that. It might cause job losses because when you look at that, you begin to look at how can you reduce your overhead costs, and that could also result in job losses. But again, you are dealing with a monster called inflation, and globally, and that has been the trend. Uh, if you look at the 20 largest economy in the world, I mean, virtually all of them have um, um, high rates. Um, this period, with exception from um, Turkey, China, and uh, uh, Turkey, China. And all of that economy have raised high. I mean, have, right, and Russia also have not rise and raised their their rate. So, when you look at that, you realize that it's a global trend, and then Nigeria will not be left out. But the only problem I have is that when you see this risk hike in these countries, you always see that then the government also come in to do some um, other physical side to reduce the burden on the people. But in this um, our own uh, side, there's the, the physical side seems to be non-existent. So what we are saying is monetary policy alone. A monetary policy alone will not give us the kind of result that we we, 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 we desire. And again, when you look at other economies um, that have raised, um, raised rates this, this this period, you realize that is um, all the rates like only um, only Mexico, Brazil have um, I mean has benefited from 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 the raise hike. All other economy in the world, Mexico, Brazil, and Japan, all other are still trading in the negative despite this rate hike. So um, definitely it calls for concern and knowing that for the first time in two decades, Nigeria have raised hike by 25, 500 basic points. It also calls for concern and it's only Ghana that have um, had 1,000 basic points in the world that have raised hike, um, that raised um, rate more than us. Uh, so, we Nigeria and Poland and Egypt have raised their uh, have raised um, uh, high their rate by over five hundred percent. So you know, while, whilst you know the, the 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 normal thing would be that okay, raising interest rates helps fight inflation. I mean, the current inflation uh, figures, uh, uh, I think, from October uh, quite quite high, um, a seventeen year high of twenty one point zero nine percent. You know, amid skyrocketing food and petrol prices, I was telling our viewers yesterday that I bought a loaf of bread, a normal sliced bread, uh, somewhere on Victoria Island for 1,000 naira. Um, gone are the days when we could buy sliced bread for 300 naira or even 400 naira. Uh, how times have changed. 1,000 naira, believe it, Mukta or not. Um, so, so, some would say maybe, maybe this isn't working. You know, we've seen tighten the last MPC meeting when they came out, they tightened the, the lending rate. Um, so I would say probably it's time to just allow people spend more uh, and boost, you know, confidence in the, in the economy and try a different approach. I think it's it's, it's um, apparently very difficult to to look at that. Um, that's why I say that's the physical side that we we'll have to do that, not the monetary side. You look at other economies of the world. Let's just give an example of the UK and the US. What they've done is that they've seen that the burden on the people with this risk hike could be could be um, very tough for them. And what the government have done also, uh, on, on their part is to come up with policy that will cushion those effect of risk hike, especially in UK. You see, they are looking at the energy side of it, especially because it's winter. In the US also, they are looking at that. Also, they are looking at broken food in the house, in households which income are, are, are less than $50,000 per annum. So those are the physical side. So the monetary side will always do. When you talk about this cushion, uh, putting more, more money in the hands of people, I think it has to do more with the physical side, coming up with policy. But unfortunately, I think, like I said, uh, in Nigeria, the physical side seems to be non-existent because um, governments are taking the back seat thus far because of election. And so they seems to be doing nothing about it. They seem, maybe they don't even look at the figure, the inflationary figure that's happening all around. So I think for me, that's a challenge. The monetary side will always do what they have to do. It's not left for the physical side. The physical side are the people that will need to deal with the people, with, with, the, with, their, with their citizens and say, look, we need to reduce this burden on our citizens. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need to reduce taxes. We need to look at these businesses that have created employment. We need to see, okay, can we can we help this business grow? How can we help this business grow? All that has to do with the monetary side. But in Nigeria, I think uh, it seems to be non-existent. All right. So uh, apart from the the uh, the interest rate, the cash reserve ratio has also been increased, and it's not the first time CBN had done that earlier this year, increasing the CIR to a minimum of two thirty two point five percent. They just been trying to mop up li liquidity, but we still keep seeing that inflation keeps biting harder and harder in Nigeria. Uh, Mukta, maybe this isn't working. 
it's working. Uh, it's working. It's working because, like I said, if you look at July month to month, we're at 1.28. Today we're at 1.42. So you could see that there's been a reduction, and that's why they are including the rate, especially because of the festivity period. You can't say it's not working, but you know, inflation is not something you begin to see the result immediately. Like the first half of, of, of next year, we could also have this challenge also because you remember again, we are we are still have dealing with the insecurity challenges. By next year, we begin to see the impact of the flooding that has happened in major major part of Nigeria and also on the air government. So you might not see it's, it's, it's a, a decrease in terms of inflation, a rapid decrease in terms of inflation. But with time, when you begin to put up these measures, you begin to see this. Remember that this thing didn't just come overnight. So definitely reduce, re reducing the inflation figure will not just happen overnight. You need to be coming up with a policy. But I, like I said, my only challenge is that this, the monetary policy seems to be the only one doing everything. And so if you don't get the physical side involved, you will not see the kind of result that you've been seeing in other economies in the world. If you look at the UK, they have, they have, right, they have a high rate, but yet you are, you, the, the, the last time you have it 40 years the highest figure for 40 years in terms of inflation is not because it's not working. Month to month is working, but when you look at the year comparable to this year to last year, you realize that it, there's still a long way to uh, to go. But you can't say it's not working. I think it's working. But again, um, Nigerians wants to have um, food on their table, and that is the the challenge why the Nigerian seems not to be working that fast is because we have a major constraint which has to do with the exchange rate volatility knowing that about 80 to 80 percent of what we consume we import it into this country so that again is a problem and cbn have been shying away of addressing the exchange rate volatility there seems to be no idea on how to um, I mean, close the gap that is being taken care of by the bureau de change until they close that gap and create the market for those that patronize the bureau de change to be able to be um to get effects seamlessly, we'll continue to have that volatility. And once that volatility comes, most of the people that have products, that import products into this country, do not wait for the bank because the process of getting effects from the bank is so long. And when you are in business, it's all about time. So all those are challenges that the CBN need to address. If they're able to address that, we could see a drastic reduction in terms of inflationary. But as long as we have the volatility, we we'll never, we we'll, won't we'll be able to see that. And again, not to forget that we we are not even most of our good comes from China, and China is beginning to grapple with the um, COVID pandemic also. So that could also increase inflation figure going forward in the long term. So uh, interesting that you went uh, to a uh, next question, which is uh, looking at the exchange rate. Do you, do you does this um, uh, you know tightening of the of the interest rates and and even the CIR does it have any any impact on on the exchange rate? Ordinarily, it should have impact because um, I mean, you have foreign portfolio investors that will be moving from the equity market to the fixed income market, and so that means you'll be able; they will be come in with FX into the economy, and that will be able to address the supply side. But we are not seeing that, even if we got a positive response, that um, foreign investors are big, foreign portfolio investors are beginning to come into the country now. But the impact is not yet felt yet. You know that they are also having their own challenges in their own countries also. So definitely you you, you would have seen that. But unfortunately, it, it's not happening yet because of the volatility that you, we just talked about. The, the difference between the parallel and the and the uh, official import export window is too wide and so every investors want to have value for their money so most of them will prefer going into the um, going to the, the the parallel market and coming to the invest, um, import export window and the cbn will not allow that to happen because that will also create hike in the parallel market and that differences will, 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 will be wider so definitely i think in the short term we are not seeing that because we are not getting the supply angle uh, and remember that uh, NMPC also have not redeemed anything to the federation account that also is a big challenge for 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 the government so our our, our i mean our um, foreign reserve is still holding between 39 39 to um 40 billion dollars so definitely it's not helping us uh, um it, it wasn't too long ago nigeria moved uh, to that uh, um import export or investors and exporters windows or some who call it um, and one would have expected that this would have, you know, because it was meant to bring uh, together, give Nigeria a sense of having one exchange rate. But we still see the parallel market holdings. We, you've talked about the difficulties in accessing FX from, from the banks. Um, what does the CBN need to do? Because the, the World Bank in its recent report on Nigeria has said that we need to have 
the CBN reading this exchange rate volatility, like you said, and have one single exchange rate. Well, how can this be achieved? We've seen several things being done by the Central Bank of Nigeria, including you know, cutting trees where uh, um, the Malam stay to, to exchange money in Abuja, so they'll have no shade. You know, and then all that <laughs> to start. Um, we've seen CBDs, uh, BDCs rather, being rated recently. Um, what does the, the, the CBN need to do to, to make sure we have a, a, a one unified exchange rate? Well, the Niger, I think the, 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 the cutting of the trees from Malan not to have shade would have really resolved because remember that the exchange rate was about 900. Maybe after that cutting of that tree, we went to as low as 680, even if now going to 770. And maybe the continuous cutting of the tree will bring it to 200 naira, like uh, the EFCC chairman has said. <laughs> but that's also, you know, later. I, 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 I think um, the, 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 the CBN have tried as much as they can, but the problem is you must make bring that supply. You must re re reduce that supply gap, and that's what the Bureau of the Change have been able to do for people. It's not because the Bureau of the Change does so much of the um, uh, exchange. If you look at what you get from the official window and what you think you have in the Bureau of the Change, you realize that the official window will do more than the Bureau of the Change. But the challenge has just been that. Um, in the official window, uh, um, the, 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 the bureaucracy involved in getting those efforts and the time factor comparable to the bureau, they change. And I, like I said, I think um, I, I, the, 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 the um, IMF or World Bank um, report is, is, is what we have been clamoring for thus far. How can, why can't you allow the bank also to be a be bridge that gap on the bureau, they change? Why can't you have a bureau, they change and um, sit in the bank wherever I can work in there? And, and do my exchange like it's done in other developed nations, and and I'm, I'm, and, and I'm, I'm, my my details and everything is taken. So I I think that is what the CBN um, should be doing. I don't know why they don't want to give the bank that um, uh, opportunity to begin to act as also a mini, uh, like a building chain, like what you have in the building chain, like it's done in every developed um, country in the world. And again. You must realize that some of these banks also even have off, um, uh, FS offshore. So when you create that window for them, they might begin to import, bring back their FS into their market to be able to meet demands for, for, for their customers. That could also be a means of uh, increasing their bottom line also. So I think, I don't know why the CBM is shying away from doing that. Um, every economy in the world, it's only in Nigeria that you go about, you see somebody in the shade telling you come and change and come in with calculator and everything. And I keep saying that because we have made it so lucrative for them, uh, if, if, uh, I'm, I'm sure if you call somebody now, oh, I want I want to know the price of um, what's the exchange rate. They will tell you, oh, let me call uh, one Abuki or let me go to one uh, website. Instead, ordinarily they are supposed to go to the CBN website. That would say, oh, what is the CBN website? What's the banking website saying to me? This that's supposed to be the true reflection of the value of our exchange rate. But unfortunately, we have allowed um, the through the change to have their way for so long a time. Remember, at the point we we're giving them 200 million every week and yet they keep on um, uh, um, exchanging at, uh, at a, an astronomical deep differences and nobody did anything about it. So by the time the CBN wake up to do everything about, the, about it, it's more or less like corruption fighting back and definitely we've seen the race hike and people are still speculating yes. that the rate will get to 900 Naira. Maybe we need to send Marwa, Marwa there so he can, he can uh, fix things, I don't know. But um, uh, very quickly, uh, do you expect the Naira uh, read the new design, newly designed Naira, you know, to to help the situation in terms of um, mopping up liquidity, reducing liquidity, and ultimately strengthening the Naira, reducing inflation as well. Yes, I expect it to happen because uh, most of the um, uh, um, um, Naira that are um, chasing the dollar that makes the dollar to the Naira exchange rate goes is uh, 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 not in the banking space. I can tell you most of this money I got into illegal means, maybe through banditry, through corruption, or through terrorism. So once you have them inside the banking box, like the CBN governor said, that there will be a reduction in the 500 to 1,000 Naira note. So all those will help mop up liquidity. And once this, the, the, the demand side of the dollar goes down, because what we are seeing now, a lot of Nigerians that have gotten this um, um, Naira through illegal means are beginning to take it to exchange for dollar because they don't want to, to lose their naira. And unfortunately, fortunately, the EFCC and the CBN have also come up with policies that are going to help. Uh, maybe that's the only way that you see that um, 
uh, and come down because most time now you realize that the bureau of change will not want to collect those money because they have to do K KYC on them. They have to watch oh, how much you collected, where did you collect it from them? So from who did you collect it from, or why are you bringing such a high, uh, huge fund into the banking space? That that could help in the short term. But like I've always said, the problem with Nigeria has not been that we are not able to to reduce the gap. Remember that. Uh, um, at a point, we went as far as 500 before we got to 360. We stayed in 360 for about two years before the COVID-19 and then now the Russia-Ukraine war brought us down to where we are today. So definitely the problem is once we, we bring these differences coming down, are we able to maintain it? And the only way we can maintain it is to begin to create other streams of income into our economy. You see, you, you, you quoted the parallel rate there. I think maybe that's another issue where we're we are always looking at the parallel rate, not, not, not the, the official rates. Maybe that's, a, that's another issue. Uh, uh, but anyway... You make, more money with the, you make more money in the parallel rate than the official rate. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you and I will always want to go to the street to change because we'll make more money from that. Um, that's a, a, an issue. But thank you so much. Um, it's, it's great to have you, Mukhtar Mohammed, financial analyst, uh, on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. And of course, uh, we'll take a break when we come back. We're looking at uh, uh, the National Assembly approving uh, a new bill. It's called the Education Bank Bill, uh, which is meant to give student loans. Is this going to work? We'll discuss that when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs>